because that's an October surprise in the era of early voting. So the October surprise was killing uh, an ambassador. <clears throat> in terms of the chain of command, the chain of command of the relevant assets did not go, not go to Hillary Clinton, evil though she is, unsuited for the presidency, though she is, for sure. There are two lines. The ground forces, and this is a group of CIA, highly trained um, knuckle draggers, right, paramilitaries, and they're in the CIA annex. This came up in the part of the testimony that I heard before starting the show. Madame Clinton referred, just in passing, to an agreement about the CIA annex. Well, there's a CIA annex in Benghazi, and it's between 12 and 20 or more CIA paramilitaries. They were not subjected to the command of Madame Clinton, but to the command of General David Petraeus, the leader of the Bonapartist neocon uh, clique. And uh, therefore, we have to ask him. He was at the movies that night, as I recall. He went to see Argo about getting hostages out of uh, Iran, some kind of a story like this. This reminds me of some of these characters who didn't want to be accountable for Pearl Harbor, how they managed to make themselves scarce on the night of. So um, ask Petraeus. Petraeus has not been called. Why not? One, I think even Tapper asked uh, one of these guys on the committee, how come you haven't called Petraeus? He was the head of the CIA. He controlled the armed assets that would have made the difference. Oh, we're not done yet. We're not done yet, said the Republican. Fine. The other side of it is air cover. Petraeus on the ground and then the air. Does it have to come all the way from the northern Adriatic? Does it have to come from Aviano near the border with uh, Slovenia? No. It can come from Sigonella, Sicily, the famous NATO base on Sicily, Sigonella, one to two hours away. Who controlled those assets? General Carter Ham, the commander of United States African Command, U.S. AFRICOM. So Petraeus on the ground, commanding. Ham, sorry, uh, and, and Ham in the air, that's the thing. So we want grilled Petraeus and grilled ham. That's our uh, demand. That's what the tax Wall Street Party should say about something like this. Right? It's a farce because you're not talking Sigonella and you're not talking the CIA uh, annex. So the other side, of course, is how, how was this brought about? Well, there are two sides to it, right? The um, the killing was apparently done by Sufyan Kumu, K uh, or Q U M U, uh, and this is a guy who was in Guantanamo concentration camp for a couple of years, very well known to the U.S. Undoubtedly made a kind of a deal to get out of there. Uh, th those are the ones who did the killing. The people who should have been providing the uh, indigenous uh, ground-based security, the February seventeenth uh, martyrs movement. Well, you remember. The previous year, there had been a rivalry for control of the rebel military, the terrorist rebel uh, military of the Benghazi Rebel Council, and that had fallen to a guy called General Yunus. Uh, and the U.S. sent in Khalifa Hifter from practically Langley, Virginia, from the CIA countryside around Langley. So Hifter got in there, and this February 17th Martyrs Brigade were the ones who assassinated Yunus leaving Hifter in command, and Hifter is still there commanding essentially the military forces of this Benghazi, Derna, Tobruk terrorist axis, right? One of the biggest uh, uh, breeding grounds, right? Vivarium for uh, terrorists anywhere in the world, suicide bombers, jihadis, you name it, they've got it all. And it's got to do, of course, with this Senussi Brotherhood, it's got to do with the fact that the British promoted terrorism against the Italians near the Egyptian border, therefore Tobruk, that kind of thing. So uh, th this this is the background. Um, you, you look at this, uh, with, you look with despair at these hearings, right? They're so idiotic, they're so childish, they're so uh, primitive, and they don't get anywhere near the truth. So uh, again, the, the thing that Stevens was doing, his last meeting— in his lifetime, 
was with a Turkish consular official. Why Turkey, of all things, in Benghazi? Well, because that was his mission. Remember that, that Stevens had been the ambassador to the, uh, the U.S. ambassador to the Benghazi rebel council, and he was part then of the airlift and sea lift operation, which took armed terrorist rebels, the jihadis, out of Libya once, the, once Gaddafi had been killed and once the Gaddafi fighting forces had been crushed, all of those crazies had to be shipped to Turkey, Alexandretta, as we've heard, and then into Syria. And a lot of them are still fighting today against uh, Assad. So that is what is uh, going on. And of course, the, uh, the libertarians, oh my God, and the right wingers and the reactionaries, uh, they just don't, they just don't get it. It's not going to, uh, to, co to come home for them. Now, we, we want to talk about uh, Bernie Sanders. We've done a, a bit of work this week in the daily briefings. You can see those on tarpley.net. Get yourself a free subscription. If you don't do this, you're missing a great value. If you want to know what's going on. Um, Bernie, uh, of course, saved Mrs. Clinton, as we um, said before, from um, a potentially damaging round of questions. Uh, and now that uh, Bernie has essentially revealed himself as a stalking horse, uh, we're getting Mrs. Clinton more complacent and more inevitable. Um, who knows? Yeah, reality may <laughs> Back in a minute on World Crisis. Welcome to the second hour of World Crisis Radio, and we're recording once again on uh, Thursday, the 22nd of October. Now, uh, we're going to have uh, a report from Rome, Italy, and this is from uh, Pino Cabras, uh, a very good friend. Uh, Pino is the head of Megachip. Megachip is one of the leading uh, alternative websites uh, in Italy, it's megachip.info, I believe, if you, uh, if you take a look. Um, you can all, one of the things you can always find there is whatever Giulietto Chiesa has been doing lately. People remember Giulietto Chiesa from um, the 9-11 uh, Truth Movement days back in 2006, 2007, 2008. He was a member of the European Parliament at that time, and he was the, one of the highest-ranking uh, uh, European officials to— uh, to have uh, some interest in the the uh, alternative explanations. So let me welcome uh, Pino Cabras and hope that he can bring us up to date on the preparations for this Congress uh, on Monday, October 26th, and also, um, you know, the reasons why. What is what is the uh, the need, I think, for a conference like this at this time? Pino, welcome. Hi, Webster. How are you? Great. I'm so glad you can join me. So uh, I guess you heard it, right? Um, you, you're, you're one of the prime movers behind this conference. So tell us all about the conference. Yeah, the conference will be in uh, Rome and uh, it will gather uh, movements uh, from all over Europe, uh, movements, parties, uh, members of parliament that are against this uh, big uh, war game called the uh, Trident Juncture that uh, has started in these days in uh, Italy, Portugal, and Spain, and uh, will involve uh, 40,000 uh, soldiers. And again, try, we, on this program, we're, whenever we hear drill or exercise, we always think, uh, is it going to go live? Because that, um, unfortunately, is what happens with these things from, from time to time. So we certainly join in the, uh, the demand that this thing be shut down, right? This should simply be canceled, called off. The Mediterranean is much too hot, right? With the Russians flying in Syria and uh, all kinds of possible uh, problems emerging. Just just call this thing off. But now also, if this yeah. is... With, yes, go ahead. Now, yes, this is a possible uh, problem because uh, always the exercise have a real uh, extension that uh, in every moment could be transformed in something else. Um, in, a, in a way, they are uh, already real because uh, uh, they have um, an enormous uh, impact uh, on the territories that are involved. For example, in Sardinia, the island uh, where I live normally, um, there is an, an enormous impact uh, uh, in the environment uh, because they shot uh, an, an incredible quantity of, of ammos. 
and all the transport system is uh, uh, interfered with uh, uh, some uh, restriction. And so uh, it's uh, already real. And we feel that is a, a way to prepare a war in a larger scale, uh, because uh, there are involved uh, 27, uh, 27 uh, countries. Yes, it's supposedly, it's either the biggest since 19, uh, 1999, or some even say the biggest going back even, even further, but certainly very big and therefore very untimely. But now, how about the the idea of, for example, Italy leaving NATO, um, becoming a neutral country, right? Pursuing national interests, and we know our, our audience here knows the sad story of uh, things like the Moro assassination, the role of the CIA, constant destabilizations. Anybody who wanted to assert some kind of an independent line was immediately targeted, and I guess that has now built up to a point where people say this this is simply not worth it. Yeah, you know very well the history of Italy and uh, Europe uh, in the year 70s when uh, the presence of NATO structures influenced the politics of many states. Uh, it was a, a sort of experiment for the um, uh, further uh, revolutions that uh, were made, uh, fabricated by uh, NATO structures. It's a way uh, to have uh, an occupied country uh, when uh, uh, when you have uh, the presence of NATO. Uh, the the problem is that many countries in the Eastern Europe in the recent years have uh, built up uh, a presence of uh, military structures that are offensive, not defensive as they were supposed to be in uh, previous times. Uh, and now, uh, for Italy, is uh, quite an issue to uh, liberate itself from uh, 90 uh, NATO and the U.S. bases that uh, constitute a sort of uh, occupation of the territory. Right. And um, yeah. also the, the constant interference in internal affairs. I mean, Aldo Moro once said we, we need to have the Christian Democrats and the communists to have a stable government with a large majority and actually have reforms. And somebody like Henry Kissinger was reportedly telling him, don't you dare. Uh, and that kind of, you know, clashes with prime ministers like Kraxi in the 1980s and and even more recently. Right. The the. Whatever you think of Berlusconi, it's also clear that he was overthrown, too, by something like uh, NATO. Yeah, he was uh, prone to certain uh, desires of the empire uh, for a long time. But at the same time, uh, he was able to uh, build new relations uh, with uh, other countries that are not uh, uh, really loved by the, the, the Washington uh, clan. And... Uh, after this um, independence in certain movements, uh, Berlusconi was targeted by many uh, actions, uh, delegitimation, uh, etc., and uh, he lost uh, most of his power. And I think people uh, know, right? He was a, he was a close personal friend of Putin, and that seemed to be the big the big issue for the NATO people. Yes, the the NATO. Uh, first uh, task in this moment uh, is uh, to avoid uh, um, um, an, in an increase of the relation between uh, uh, Europe and uh, Russia. Uh, for NATO, it's uh, vital uh, to cut uh, every relation between uh, two sides of Europe. Uh, we continue to consider uh, Russia, for example, a part of Europe. Uh, a strategic uh, asset of uh, a common uh, security, a common uh, um, common uh, uh, protection. Sure. Uh, while in this moment uh, they are trying to separate uh, definitely uh, the the Russian system from the European one, and uh, many leaders in Europe uh, have uh, this strange relation with uh, America because they are blackmailed, they are not uh, really independent in many aspects, 
but at the same time, uh, they have a relation with their industrial system that uh, finds more convenient to 